fight. You're pretty looking people. If I can tell you people, they were the devil's children. <laughs> okay. Okay, don't you don't do it. Look at the camera. <laughs> Greetings from Castle Goring from Mickey Aurora. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Aurora and Mickey are obviously determined to console me because I am in mourning. I'm mourning for the loss of Harry's reputation. <laughs> One tear left eye. Right on demand. I have to mourn for poor H's reputation because he has humiliated himself in front of the whole world while trying to do a Meganian hustle that would just deceive everybody into thinking, my goodness, Pa rarely needs me and Pa and I are almost as close as Granny and I were because I had to go and see Granny for all of 15 minutes so that I could be sure that she had the right people around her. And now that Paz announced that he's ill, I had to get on a plane. And not a private plane, because of course I have to think in terms of my carbon footprint when I'm not with my wife. And, oh sorry, I should be in character with him. I have to think of my carbon footprint when I'm not on a plane with my wife. You, she's too grand to travel anything but privately. Not for her commercial, but I'm just a prince, so it's okay for me. So he goes, gets on a flight, followed by back grid. Oh, how touching. Assiduously followed by back grid, even into the VIP section at Lax Airport. Oh, how does that work? Oh, I would ring up and ask Carl Larson if I was speaking to him. But since I do not condescend to speak to him after he betrayed my trust and told the gutter press that I was going to be hosting Thomas Markle two years ago, oh, I don't think I can ask Carl Larson how it's done, but we can imagine. Anyway, we're going to have fun today because Harry has exposed himself in all his inglorious nakedness as being a very lacking in all departments. Because contrary to what you might have been told, Harry did not spend 45 minutes with the king. He spent the sum total of 12 minutes. So he flew all the way from California here to England to go back to California for the show of 45 minutes, but the reality of 12. <laughs> Poor age. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm just so distraught on behalf of age. It's just awful, awful, awful. You see what happens when people are too clever by half and stupid by whole. But let me not anticipate. Let me plunge into the questions. Jan Seeger Lambert says, the drama son, brainwashed by Norma Desmond Markle, is so heartlessly selfish. He could have come quietly. The King and the Prince of Wales should be the only focus here. They are loved by us and cherish the late Queen's integrity legacy. And she entrusted her deep trust and our trust in Charles and William. That is all that matters. Well, Jan Siegel Lambert, 
a little confidence shall I share with you? Harry wasn't even able to find a bed with a friend, much less at one of the royal residences. Oh dear, oh dear, how does that work? And yes, he tried a Norma Desmond moment, but then <laughs> I'm married to Norma Desmond. Yeah, you certainly are, H. You certainly are. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for another close-up. Yes, I am. Hot me. Hot to trot. Don't take my word for it. Ask H. What did you say your nickname was H? Blue Todger? Hm. Mary Whitmore says, Harry, only, and I'm going to read out some of these comments before we get on to the other stuff, because as usual, I am so m moved, really, by the common sense, the integrity, the decency of so many of these comments. Mary Whitmore says, Harry only wants attention and money. That's right. And Lisa Gurler says, Harold is no hero coming back to see his father. He destroyed the last years of Prince Philip, the Queen, making them a misery. Here he is sent by his odious wife with his begging bowl, 45 minutes was 40 minutes too long. Harold is no hero coming back to see his father. Mm. Well, the visit was 12 minutes. So, Lisa Grola, you sort of were locking into the zeitgeist of the moment along with everybody else. I mean, did Harry seriously think that everybody would be so dumb that they would think, oh, Harry loves his father. He loves his father so much that he's going halfway across the world to lend his support. Well, of course, the family has already learned the hard way, what Harry's definition of lending support is. Remember, he gave that interview to that lady, I think her name is Hoda Kolb, uh, that he had come to England to make sure that the Queen was surrounded by the right people. Mm. Well, of course, he needed to make sure that the King was surrounded by the right people. And that wouldn't include the present queen, of course, except she's there. So, Irish Eyes says, sorry, but all this rubbish about Harry visiting Charles, I'm afraid we do not forgive and forget the pain he has caused to not only the royal family, but the people of the UK through his words and actions. He is not wanted back here. Well, that is the message that the public has been delivering loud and clear. Notwithstanding the efforts of the media to spin things so that they would have a reconciliation, olive branches, all those stupid ideas that those brain-dead royal correspondent and other idiots come up with. And we're nearly finished now. Saint, Saint, Saint S says, it's a form of photo bombing. The Harkers have no chance of getting any press in California while the king is in peril. This is where the action is. So this is where Harry must enter stage left, only to walk off stage 
right shortly after. God saved the king. And God saved the king from Harry and Meghan <laughs> as well. Of course, it's a form of photo bombing. You know, Harry and Meghan had to muscle their way into everything. It's not enough that next week they're going to be in Canada on a royal visit related to Invictus. No, that's not enough. They had to somehow wangle their way in. There's no bandwagon that passes by that they don't jump on it. And even when it requires a leap across the Atlantic and continental America, they'll take that as well. Of course, it's full too bombing, but it went down like a lead balloon. I mean, could the king have made it any clearer than in having an invitation engraved at Smithson? stating that he tolerated Harry's visit. And I'm sure a part of him appreciated the fact that in a different world, Harry's visit might have meant what he wanted. He, Charles, would have hoped it meant. But the mere fact that the visit was so curtailed tells you all you need to know that the king doesn't trust his son. I said it earlier this week on television and I'm going to repeat it again. There can be no rapprochement as long as Meghan is in the picture. And even if Meghan is out of the picture, and there is a rapprochement, there will be no trust. And you cannot have a close relationship with someone you cannot trust. It couldn't be simpler. J. Fraw says, Lady C, my head is about to explode. Have been watching various news channels from the UK and numerous royal commentators, flatulators might be a better word for most of them. I am shocked by the narrative that Prince Harry has been suddenly reformed into a loving son who should be allowed to step back into the fold and carry the family forward as they struggle with illness. It's diabolical. They seem totally delusional. Why is the press pushing this narrative? I was relieved to see you on GB News reminding people <laughs> that leopards don't change their spots. Thank you for keeping it real. Thank you for appreciating my attempt to keep everybody's feet firmly on the ground, notwithstanding the fact that I was a lone wolf a baying in the wilderness. And you could see it was almost an irritant, except to the public. <laughs> I tell you, you really have to laugh. Well, why does the press purvey such a narrative? because they think that's what will sell papers and keep people tuned in. They also, the gutter press especially, but the, shall we say, less elevated segments of the media are gross sentimentalists covered in sanctimony with no real understanding of either the people they're writing for or writing about or speaking of and speaking to. 
That's been my observation over the years. Of course, I'm lucky. Although I'm not a journalist, I'm a writer, and I'm also a public figure. I have been in the public eye for over 50 years, totally unwillingly, uh, for much of the time. Not now, but for much of the time. And I was also, from childhood, exposed to social columns. My mother was in the, what in those days you'd call the society columns every week. So I'm used to the flattering aspects of the press and the unflattering aspects of the press. And it has to be said, they really don't, as a category of human being, seem to understand the people they're writing about. And to an extent, it's because people from privileged backgrounds are exotica. We are almost dehumanized entities where they're concerned. That's why it's so easy for them to trash us unfairly. And that's why they get practically everything so gloriously wrong. That's the first reason. The second reason is, by and large, they have no access into the world or insight into the people they're writing about. They see one's public face. They don't see or understand the values that motivate the way one would function and behave. And when they get near to it, some of them, they poo poo it. They can't believe that people actually will care about things like honor and integrity. So they go with the vulgarisms. A lot of these people are vulgarians. They are not only sanctimonious and hypocritical, they're vulgarians, and a lot of them are extremely envious of the people they're writing about as well. So it's very easy to be dehumanized by somebody who you who envies you. So I hope that answers the question. And they really actually, it's been my personal experience, they really don't regard us as human the way they regard themselves or each other. Sad but true. Corinne Lavinia says, I think King Charles has made his feelings towards Harry's visit very clear. I doubt they spent more than 20 minutes together. They didn't spend 20 minutes together. They spent 12 minutes together. The Viper has not been allowed to slither its way back in King Charles saw what that visit was really all about, a publicity stunt for Harry to try and improve his public image. I wouldn't disagree with that. And I'm pretty sure that what you are saying reflects the people of, of who are very close to the scenario. I'm not going to speak for the king himself, but I'm certainly going to speak for a lot of the people around him. Those are their sentiments. I don't want to speak for the king because I don't want ever to feel that anything I said would actually interfere with any possibility of a rapprochement between father and son. Not that I expect one in the next 24 hours or even the next 24 days or even the next 24 months. Possibly not even in the next 24 years. Anyway, I believe that King Charles would have insisted on his wife Camilla's presence at the meeting, and that would have certainly upset Harry. If the king had really wanted to, he could have delayed his departure for Sandringham. 
I just so wish those annoying journalists would stop going on <laughs> about olive branches and reconciliation. We all know it's going not going to happen anytime soon. Quite right, it's not. And that much was self-evident just by the way the whole situation unfolded. I wish to throw out a possibility to you and I'm not going to say it as a certainty because I don't want to compromise any anybody but has it occurred to you that Harry took it upon himself to come and then informed his father and actually, not necessarily his father directly, but his father's office, that he was coming and when he was arriving. I throw that out as a possibility without indicating whether it is a certainty or not, because the one thing about a situation like this is if something has happened immediately, it's very difficult to convey accurate information without sometimes compromising the sources of that information. Lulu's back in town says, I'm so fed up with the press going on and on about a rapprochement and how Harry and the wife could be carrying out royal duties. They seem to forget most of the people want nothing to do with them, and what organisation would want to be linked with them. Even the army doesn't want to entertain Harry. Very well observed. You know, I'm sick, quite frankly, of the nonsense that the press often come up with. And it's so unrealistic and it's really so insulting to people's discernment and the position that people, whether it's the observers or the people involved, actually how they feel about things. It's, yeah, <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I mean, who ever heard of embracing an ass to your bosom unless you are Cleopatra. M. Grosskopf says, this is such a typical narcissistic move. Crisis, illness, I'll be there. I'm on my way. <laughs> I'm here. I'll save the day. The optics tie right into last week's pseudo-royal behaviour in Jamaica. This is all about sensing a vacuum and swooping in. It's about destabilising the monarchy to have a photographer following the ambulance chasing sun literally to the palace to draw attention and highlight perceived weakness in leadership due to illness. It looks like he's angling for his job back, representing the firm. So transparent. Glad the king fled the scene with his helicopter. <laughs> well, that about says it all, doesn't it? Uh, Harry is a drama queen. Meghan is a drama queen. The combination of two drama queens is like the combination of alcohol and Valium. It has a potentiative effect. One and one doesn't become two. One and one becomes 11 or even 20 or even 30 times the potency of what it would have been if it had been one element on its own. And as I indicated, you need to consider the possibility that the drama queen Harry and the drama queen Meghan, 
you know, H, you've got to go. You just got to go. I mean, you can't stay here. You've got to go. I mean, if you don't go, you know, we're going to lose even more credibility than we've already lost. Not, of course, that any of it is our fault. It's everybody's fault. I mean, look at what happened last week in Jamaica. I mean, we can't have more of this happening. No, H, no, H. You've got to go. And but Meg, what about security? Don't worry about security, Harry. It doesn't really matter if you're bumped off. All that matters is that you go. You need to keep yourself relevant. Come on. Grow up. I'm, sometimes I'm just so sick and tired of this brain dead idiot. You can imagine her thinking. Mm. <laughs> well, they beg for it and they're getting it. They turn themselves into figures of mockery and all we need to do is put ourselves in their shoes and out comes the logical lingo. <laughs> you couldn't make any of this up. It really is wildly entertaining. Robert Stevenson says, Harry and Meghan will never have dollar problems and I wonder why you want us to think that you you know very well Lady C they will never be desperate for dollars so how about forgetting your spin on that Robert Stevenson sorry sweetie pie I appreciate uh, your concern that I might have got it wrong but I've not got it wrong. You clearly don't understand the way money works beyond a certain level. Harry and Meghan need a, in, need a capital sum of at least a half a billion dollars to function at the level they do. And they not only don't have a capital sum of that amount, but they don't have a totality of liquid assets and investments that would even approach beyond a tenth of that. That means that Harry and Meghan have a lifestyle that they cannot afford and that they cannot sustain with their capital assets or their income. You might be deluded enough to believe that the figures that Harry and Meghan have banded about 130 million from Netflix, 20 or 30 million from Spotify, another 20 or 10 or 15 or whatever it is, because it's all behind the sky nonsense. Millions from Penguin Random House. Choose to believe it and feel free to believe it. I don't. I don't. I may not be rich, but I've mixed with rich people all my life. And I know enough about money to know what it takes to sustain a certain sort of lifestyle. So, sorry. I'm not putting any spin on it. And I'm certainly not forgetting to put the realistic interpretation on it. If you wish to be unrealistic, please feel free. Angie. Mac Mullin says, I'm glad you think people won't change. Harry treated the late Queen despicably, but turned up throwing his weight around at her funeral, making out how much he loved her when he really was sussing out his inheritance. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. Now the king is unwell, he can't believe his luck and has sped over <laughs> to see the lie of the land. Well, if you're cynical, it's only because Harry and Meghan's conduct have made you come to the conclusion that cynicism is what applies 
when assessing their conduct. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> William has his measure and won't meet him. But I wonder who else in the family will bother with the traitor. Harry is despicable for jumping on the bandwagon for status. Well, as you saw, Harry was here for less than 25 hours. He arrived on the afternoon flight from LA on British Airways and departed on the same flight the following day. No member of his family put him up. No friend put him up. Now, don't tell me that of all the people that Harry actually does know and all he's related to and all he's friendly with, many of whom live in large houses, and some of whom live in palaces and castles that not even one squeaky little bedroom could be found by anybody for Harry. That should be telling you something loud and clear. Pariah, pariah, pariah. Mm. I'm not so sure that he's that he's jumped on the bandwagon for his inheritance. I think he's jumped on the bandwagon to remain relevant, to keep himself in the news, to give the message that he is still closely connected to the family and that when the situation warrants he will be on the spot, except he's humiliated himself in front of the whole world because a 12 minute visit, even a 30 minute visit or a 45 minute visit, which could have easily been conducted over FaceTime, wasn't. And all publicity was unleashed for the great Harry to show how relevant he was. King's daughter says, Harry will enjoy breathing non meganian air. 512. Good one, Lady C. Thanks. I'm glad you appreciated my little comment. Seriously, I doubt you will ever see a travelling. Oh, may I say that? this point. I always, possibly because I also am actually a believing Christian, keep the door ajar for somebody to actually have a Damascene moment to become like Saul of Tarsus and to actually see the light and change for the better. And I may be droll about it, but I do believe in always leaving the door slightly ajar, just in case even though the evidence may point and all other indicators may point to the fact that it's never gonna happen. Okay, let me make that clear. Seriously, I doubt you will ever see Harry traveling with the children to the UK without Meghan. She's evilly smart enough to know if their marriage were to crumble, that the kids are her trump card. Also, that if they're here, that they remain here. And she would then not be in the driving seat, which she now is in California. That's the issue. 
where does the Hague Convention apply in the event of a separation and divorce? And what applies under the Hague Convention to which both the United Kingdom and the United States are signatories is that the marital home at the time of the separation is the jurisdiction in which decisions are made in terms of the divorce and custody ongoing into the future of the children. So you're on to something there. That's all oh, I've always said. Meghan got him out of England into the United States because it gives her more flexibility. It doesn't only give her more security financially as well as other ways, but it gives her more flexibility. It gives her more power. And Meghan, according to everything I have ever seen or heard about her, loves power. So to continue, if H alone brought the kids to London, presumably they could be kept there to keep them out of their narcissistic mum's clutches. Sounds dramatic and probably will never happen, but it's interesting to ponder. Well, it couldn't happen if he brought them on a visit and then wanted to keep them here while the matrimonial home was in the United States of America. Not only would a federal law kick in in terms of the Hague Convention, but local state law would kick in. So he would not be able to bring them over here and keep them. That would be a breach of various international laws. But if they move back here, even for three weeks, if they've made a permanent move here and he decides, I want out, then English law kicks in and England has jurisdiction. So I hope that answers the question. Margaret Leavitt says, my heart goes out to William. He has had so much trauma and the horrible actions of his brother when William would have needed him must have cut like a knife. My understanding is they did. One cannot make amends at a time like this because it is too saturated in pain and hurt. It is the right and proper thing for him to, to see the king. He blew off his grandmother and grandfather he may know how hard guilt can be to live with, I doubt it. No one can trust him, but they are extending grace to him. Let him write his own ending to this nightmare he created. Well, of course William has been cut to the quick. Anybody with a heart and a brain and a conscience would be cut to the quick. And yes, Harry has shown by the way he treated his grandparents, in particular his grandmother, because Harry could easily, while they were in England, have accepted the Queen's invitation to attend upon her at Balmoral with his wife and the children. He had an invitation. His rooms were prepared for them. I know this to be a fact. On the off chance that they would go, not that the Queen or anybody else expected them to go. Harry chose not to. Meghan chose not to. They couldn't be bothered. Don't tell me they didn't know that the Queen was on the last lap. Nobody might have actually realised she was going to die in a matter of days. 
In fact, nobody really expected her to die in a matter of days. But certainly if you had listened to the things I had been saying for some time, I expected her to die in the shorter rather the longer term, according to what I had been told. And if I knew it, you can bank on it. Harry and Meghan knew it. He may be dumb and she may be egotistical, but she's not that dumb that she didn't figure that one out. And no, quite frankly, can he be so dumb that he didn't figure it out either. When were they going to go? They weren't. They had no plans to go. Seeing his father, a PR stunt in my view, a PR stunt. And my understanding is nobody is deceived. Everybody has Harry's measure. It's yardstick is Meganian. Okay? Kitty says, it's remarkable how few reporters at all seem to care how William is feeling, isn't it just? Let alone the fact that he'll have to care for his wife and father and to double his load much sooner than expected. All that the media writes about is the whiny has been, who only came for his personal benefit and barely anyone is concerned how William is coping. Has been and his wife have been leaking worse than the sieve, milking the sad situation for all it's worth. Absolutely distasteful and disgusting. Thank God she stayed away. Well, there would have been no possibility of her being welcomed. As it is, you can see from the brevity of his stay at Clarence House, plus the brevity of his stay in this country, that his presence wasn't exactly embraced either. He could have stayed longer. He could have gone to see his father at Sandringham, had his father wished to see him had he wished to see his father, had he wished to see Pa, I'm really sorry for the lies that wife of mine has told about you through amid scabies in Endgame and through the willful damage we have both caused to you and to the institution that has given all of us, the greatness that we possess. Did he do any of that? Do apples grow on lilac trees? Obviously not. Tracy Julian says, oh goody goody, Harry and Meghan are planning on coming to Canada. Ugh. The couple, this is now a quote, the couple will undertake their working visit to attend events connected with the 12 month marker from February the 14th to February the 16th, People reports, and follows the 2023 Invictus Games, which were held in Dusseldorf, Germany. Mm. Harry better hope that his father lasts a long time and remains healthy because I don't think William is going to be minded to have that oaf and his frowsy wife sashaying around, pretending to represent the royal family when they're only representing their own selves and their own financial needs and gluttonous ambition for greater wealth and greater fame. But next week, they will be in Canada. We are dealing with media junkies 
their fix is attention. Their fix is to be constantly in the media. The reality is they are a truly grotesque couple as far as I can see with no redeeming virtues whatsoever. And what I find astonishing is that both of them are so out of touch with reality that they can't see that their best bet is to withdraw as much as possible from public life for the foreseeable future, leading the private life that they said they wanted to leave, lead and stop trying to give the message that they are great and good and wonderful because nobody is convinced except their brain dead followers and of course, I'm sure each of them is convinced by the other. Oh, Meg, do you think I'm a genius? Oh, oh, H, of course you're a genius. I mean, I've never met anybody who had a greater grasp on how the world should be ruled than you. Now, run along and be a good boy. Ring up David Sherborne and Elton John and tell them that you need to sue another publication. Pretty please, after all, you need H to protect me. I'm in need of protection. You didn't protect your mom. And look what happened there. You don't want history to repeat itself, do you? I hope not, because wouldn't it be too awful if anything happened to me? I mean, where would you be without me? Liberated, liberated, should be the answer. <laughs> and on that note, I say thank you very much for listening. I hope this has been of some interest to you. Please keep the questions and comments coming in so I will know what we should be addressing. Okay, thank you so much. God bless and goodbye. And if you have truly enjoyed this, please like, share, subscribe, press the notification bell, and Godspeed.